Between 1851 and 1937, the America's Cup offered us many magnificent races that forged the reputation of the Cup. The matches of 1901 were particularly disputed between Shamrock II, the new Sir Thomas Lipton boat designed by George Lennox Watson, and Columbia, already winner in 1899, a drawing by Nat Herishoff. The first race took place on the 28th of September off New York. The starting was from Sandy Hook Light Ship. The following comments are from the New York Times article published the day after the race. When the regatta committee's boat, the Big Tug Navigator, arrived at the starting point, she hoisted the international code letter C, which signified that the race would be 15 miles to windward or leeward in return. Columbia went on the starboard tack about 300 yards south of the lightship. Shamrock followed her. Columbia was a little higher than Shamrock and going faster. The consequence was that she arrived at the line too soon. She bore away towards Shamrock, but being ahead of her, crossed her bows. The result being that Shamrock luffed out across her stern and took the weather berth. This photograph from the Detroit Publishing Company collection illustrates this decisive moment. Under mainsails, club top sails, jibs, and stay sails, the races were approaching the starting line. Here is one of the Richard Lane's powerful portraits of past America's Cup races. At this critical instant the starting signal was given, and Shamrock sped across the line in the smoke of the whistle. They had crossed the line two seconds apart, Shamrock at 11 hours 0 minutes and 14 seconds, and Columbia at 11 hours 0 minutes and 16 seconds. Columbia tried to luff out on Shamrock's weather quarter and so Shamrock went on the port tack at 11 hours 1 minute and 15 seconds. Columbia followed at 11 hours 1 minute and 45 seconds. On the port tack they both pointed equally well and showed about the same angle of heel. At 11 hours 14 minutes and 45 seconds, Captain Barr put Columbia on the starboard tack to get her wind clear. Shamrock followed suit at 11 hours 15 minutes and 15 seconds. The wind was better, and both yachts were footing fast. At 11 hours 22 minutes and 45 seconds, Barr put Columbia on the port tack. If he intended to cross Shamrock's bow, he was unable to do so and 45 seconds later he went on the starboard tack again. Barr now gave Columbia a good full to run out from under Shamrock's lee. At 11.50, Columbia was a quarter of a mile ahead, but a considerable distance to leeward. Now Barr repeated his former tactics. At 11 hours 54 minutes and 15 seconds, Columbia went on the port tack and stood towards Shamrock. As they came together it was seen that Shamrock had an overlap on Columbia and, being on the starboard tack, had the right of way. Consequently Columbia had to tack. At 11 hours 59 minutes and 30 seconds, Captain Sycamore threw Shamrock to the port tack. 15 seconds later, Columbia also went on the port tack. As they reached out from the Long Island shore, the seas became longer and deeper, and both yachts pitched gently as they drove out toward deep water. Here for a time the lift of the sea seemed to favor Columbia, but she gradually drew up till she was almost on the weather beam of Shamrock. Columbia could not lift herself far enough up on Shamrock's weather beam to suit Captain Barr, and at 12 hours, 32 minutes and 35 seconds, he put her on the starboard tack. Shamrock followed at 12 hours 33 minutes and 50 seconds. At 12 hours 33 minutes and 55 seconds, Captain Barr put Columbia on the port tack once again, but again Columbia could not cross her bows, and so tacked close at 12 hours 35 minutes and 30 seconds. 
At 12 hours, 53 minutes and 20 seconds, Captain Sycamore, seeing that he was in a position to make the mark, put Shamrock on the port tack for the last time. Naturally, Columbia did not stand on the starboard tack a second longer. Both yachts were now standing on their last board, with the mark both not three miles away. Columbia seemed to gain a little. When Captain Sycamore swept past the outer mark, it was a splendid exhibition of racing seamanship. Shamrock was timed around the outer mark at 1 hour 25 minutes and 12 seconds and Columbia at 1 hour 25 minutes and 53 seconds. Shamrock was 41 seconds ahead, having gained on the beat out 39 seconds. The moment Captain Barr had Columbia around the outer mark, he set to work to luff out to get Shame Rock's wind, but Captain Sycamore would not stand any such performance. He, too, luffed. Shamrock had her spinnaker boom down and the sail up in stops at 1 hour 27 minutes and 45 seconds, just 2 minutes and 33 seconds after rounding the mark. Columbia was ready with hers at almost the same time. At 1.30 Columbia made a feint of squaring away for the run home. As Barr luffed again, Sycamore was ready for him and luffed too. And so the great bluff of the spinnaker failed to work. At 1.31 Columbia gave it up and, squaring away for home, broke out her spinnaker to the head. Sycamore followed suit. Columbia broke out her balloon jib top sail at 1 hour 35 minutes and 50 seconds. Shamrock took in her stay sail and broke out her balloon jib top sail at 1 hour 36 minutes and 50 seconds. And now began the final shift in this panoramic yacht race, the shift which was to land the victory. To the amazement of every spectator who knew anything about yachting Columbia, in spite of her smaller sail area, began to draw up towards Shamrock, and at 1.46 was on even terms with her. At 1.48 she had drawn ahead. She had her crew all around her mast, whilst Shamrocks were all aft near the taffrail. Some beautiful photos testify of this very tight arrival. Shamrock gained a little now, but the gain lasted only a few minutes. Barr trimmed his ballast by calling a few men aft, and then Columbia began to move faster. Shamrock at once began to drop astern, and in a very few moments there was as much open water between them as there had been when Columbia first went ahead. At 2.30 the yachts were off the Long Beach Hotel, and each was holding her own. Try as he might by holding a course directly astern of Columbia. Captain Sycamore could not draw up to her with his gold boat. It was a foregone conclusion that Columbia would win. With each yacht holding her own and no more. They sailed majestically down the long lane of heaving waters between the two columns of excursion steamers, Columbia leading the way and Shamrock following at a distance of 150 to 200 yards. This magnificent spectacle has unfortunately never been illustrated by an artist. A little effort, please, Shane Couch, Anthony Blake or Richard Lane. And thus the yachts crossed the finish line. Columbia beat Shamrock in actual time over the course 37 seconds and by corrected time 1 minute 20 seconds. On the beat to Windward, Shamrock's gain was 39 seconds. On the run home, Columbia's gain was 1 minute 16 seconds.